I always touch the mic before I get here because I'm also the sound guy, so I can't turn it on once I'm down here. And I just got nervous for a second. But Merry Christmas, everybody. Merry Christmas. Thank you for coming out. You are the winners of choosing the correct night. <laughs> Last night, it was uh, fully crowded, standing room only in the back. It was, it was pretty crazy, but it was a lot of fun. It was an amazing performance. So welcome. My name is Angie Bermudez. I'm the first uh, pastor here at First Baptist Church, and I uh, just want to thank you guys for coming out tonight. A couple of housekeeping things. Um, if you need to use the restroom, we have a couple. We have one down the stairs uh, through the entryway you came in, but you, instead of going outside, you go down the stairs and follow that around uh, to the right, and you will see the bathroom right there on your right. Um, also, if you can't make it down the stairs, that's okay. Just wake your way through that door, follow it around to the fellowship hall in the back. We'll actually we'll be having food and the time to get together um, after the, uh, the, the performance, but there's two bathrooms back there as well that you could uh, make yourself, avail yourself to. Also, cell phones. I'm just going to say this right now as kindly as I can. Don't assume they're off. Don't be that guy. All right? We had one last night. Um, it was a quiet time, and there was a loud ringing. So just check again right now, and uh, everybody will appreciate it. There it is. Perfect. <laughs> On cue. All right, I'll pay you later. Um, also, this is you guys. This is the twentieth year they've been doing cantatas. So it's a fortieth cantata. Um, Shirley's been directing all of them, so that is an amazing feat. Let's give her a round of. A I've only been here for one year, uh, more than a quarter of those, so I, it's been enjoyable being here, seeing each one, and everyone's been amazing, so you guys are in for a treat again tonight. Uh, we, we, after I, I pray, we're going to all sing a hymn, hymn 122. Just follow the uh, choir. The, the, the musicians are going to play through one verse first, and then we're going to join in singing. All right? So you see the choir stand, and then that's when you join in. All right, let's go ahead and open in prayer. Dearly Father, God, just thank you, Lord, for this wonderful day you have given to us. We thank you for this time of year, Lord, where we can celebrate the coming of your Son. We thank you that Jesus is Lord, and that it was proclaimed by the Father, and that we can proclaim it here uh, through song, Father God. We thank you for that. We thank you for the talent, and let it all be a praise to you, because you are the only one worthy of our praise. And we pray this in your holy, precious name, Jesus. Amen. Amen.
Merry Christmas. It's wonderful to see a nice big group here this afternoon. I was a bit flabbergasted yesterday when we came out, and oh my goodness, we had people standing in the back, and there wasn't a seat anywhere, so be comfy today. This is wonderful. You're about to hear a wonderful cantata this afternoon called Jesus, Advent of the Messiah. This is a new composer for us. This is Mary McDonald. We've never done her work before, but we just loved it. I did the first time I heard it. I said, this is for us. And if you were here last year, you heard, uh, I hear the prophet Colin. And that was with Appalachian instruments, and it was quite gentle and all that kind of thing. Well, this one's not so gentle today. So we've got all kinds of instruments to play. It opens with a very majestic overture, so prepare yourselves. And then uh, <laughs> I wanted to tell you, of all years, when we're not using a Pepper Choplin uh, one, a cantata, I had the grand opportunity of meeting him last month, actually, at Carnegie Hall in New York City. And it was, what were my chances of ever speaking with him personally when uh, there were probably 2,500 people there or whatever? Well, of all things, when at the second half of the program, he was featured as the first conductor with a 400-voice choir and a huge orchestra. It was wonderful. And then um, all of a sudden I, we look over and he's in the next box to us in the first balcony. So I had a chance to trot myself right over and say, <laughs> how do you do? I'm here from central Maine to hear this. And actually I will tell you that a few years ago when we started using his pieces, I had emailed him and said to him, we loved his music and so forth. And so sure enough, I said, he said, well, what's your name? And I told him, I said, you know, years ago I emailed you to tell you that we love your music. He said, I remember that email. He said, I think you're the only people in Maine that use my music. <laughs> I said, well, you're not, because I know we've loaned it around to other people and so forth. But anyway, it was just a, it was just a real smile from the Lord. I was just so thankful to have that lovely experience. And it didn't stick around too long because I didn't want him to ask if we were doing this, this year's cantata, <laughs> which maybe that'll be another year. We're not sure. Well, we have some new folks with us uh, today, and I want you to know who they are. This is Allison Parker, and as she reminds me, she's from Ripley. She's not from Dexter, even though she lives on the end of my road. And yes, and we're, she has a lovely alto voice, and we're delighted to have her. And then we have people from St. Albans. We have Lynn and Tom Roach, who have joined us this year. Raise your hands so they can see who you are. And it's, it's been kind of a rough year for weather and for sickness. We've had many people who have had to drop out because they just were not able to continue. And also, not only sickness for themselves, but we've had people whose families have had great sickness. So it's, it's a smaller group, but we're hoping come, um, come spring, when it's Easter again, we'll, you'll see a much bigger crowd. But I'll tell you, they, they will please you today. I will say that <clears throat> in September, we said goodbye to our very dear friend, Doug Doyon. He had sung with us for years and years, and we miss his tenor voice. We were privileged to have him with us for so long. And don't forget that you can access this cantata, and really the others too, on our website. The church website is listed on your program right at the very top, uh, right under where it says um, First Baptist Church. Well, of course, you don't have a cantata without thanking many people. So if you read the back of your bulletin, you know that doesn't even begin to cover all the people that we have to say thank you to. Um, and we have a new person in the sound room. We have, of course, Andrew, who has um, taken over bringing us new mics, new sound system, which has been wonderful. But Pam Netto has taken over after Ethel Fern has retired as our sound person. So we're very grateful to her, and she's done a wonderful job for us. I think that I always remind you, this is an hour of worship. You really haven't come to a show. Uh, that isn't what we're about. We're here for 
lifting our voices in praise. What a gift music is, a gift from the Heavenly Father. And to be able to celebrate this Messiah's birth with such beautiful music is a privilege, a creative, uh, innovative way for us to share these truths. Now we're opening today with a lively song. This is a duet. <clears throat> and I chose this, You Can Trust God, it's called. You might miss the words if I don't tell you this. So, A few weeks ago, we had a wonderful sermon here on the covenants of God, the promises that God made to his people Israel that carried through the entire Old Testament and culminated with the birth of Jesus. First Abraham, and then his covenant with Noah, and then with David, and finally all coming together in the, in the man Jesus. And how privileged we are as God's great mercy and grace extends to us forgiveness and allows us to enter his holy presence. It's a beautiful song. After they uh, finish the duet, we have uh, two college girls who are, who are going to play for us. We have a duet of clarinet and flute. This is Celine and Elise Beaudry. This is Brian's, the Brian's girls, and they actually sang with us when they were in high school. Now they're in college, but they wanted to play this year, and I was delighted to have them. So we welcomed them, and we're very privileged to have them. And then later on, my granddaughter Amelia will play a little violin solo. So we're, we're just grateful you're here. Enjoy every note. Just We love doing this, so relax, and we'll just let it be. Thank you for being here, and a very Merry Christmas. You can trust God to keep his promises. You can trust God to keep his word. You can trust God to keep his promises. You can trust the Lord to keep his word. Alleluia. 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 God will keep his word. To Abraham of old God gave his word that a son would be born unto his name. And his family would number as the stars. And Abraham took God at his word. The Lord himself shall give a sign, said the prophet Isaiah in God's word. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and she shall call his name Emmanuel. Alleluia! 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 God has kept his word. Oh, Bethlehem, you're but a little town, wrote the prophet Micah in God's word. Yet you will be the birthplace of a king who is alive from everlasting ages past. Alleluia! 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 God has kept his word. Alleluia! 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 God has kept his word. God has kept his word. God has kept his word.
O come, come to the manger of Christ. Herein lies the mystery. God, come to earth. The incarnate God, born a babe in Bethlehem. At long last, the fullness of time has come. The waiting, longing world sees the promise. God comes to us in a most unexpected way. The years of waiting are over. Ancient prayers long offered are answered tonight in the child born in Bethlehem. Angel announcements, previously unseen stars in the heavens. Yes, in an instant the world has changed. Glory fills the air. Shepherds and kings, rich and poor alike, are drawn to the manger and are welcomed. Only God could have orchestrated this gathering. Now, under those stars, as Mary looked at her newborn babe, she could still hear the echo of the angel's greeting. Don't be afraid. You are highly favored. She was the recipient of God's grace, chosen to bear the eternal Son of God. And this little one, he was the Messiah, the Son of the Most High. Suddenly, Mary understood something she could not have understood before. Every question, every doubt, and every fear had one answer tonight. And he was right here in her arms. Is this a dream? Can it be real? An angel voice, how should I feel? I thought he'd come to another one, for I'm just a girl. He's the 
The angels announced to shepherds, a savior has been born. He is Christ, the Lord, the anointed one. Prophets, priests, and kings are all anointed. This baby is all three. He is the priest who brings us to the Father. He is the prophet. He is truth. He is the king who leads the way. And he is Jesus, holy child, born in a manger, come to deliver us from our sins. From eternity past, Jesus was. Jesus, the one who would say, 
truly, I tell you, before Abraham was born, I am. Jesus, the one who would say to the Father, glorify me in your presence with the glory I had with you before the world began. He is the eternal Son of God, the lovely, pure, gracious gift to humankind. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, Magi from the east arrived in Jerusalem asking, Where is he who has been born King of the Jews? For we saw his star in the east and have come to worship him. They were kings searching for the eternal King of all kings, to pay homage to him and to bring gifts. They expected to find him in a palace or perhaps the great temple in Jerusalem. But instead, the star led them on until they came to the place where Joseph and Mary were staying with Jesus. There they entered, fell down, and worshiped him.
It was a still, cold night when the promise of a Redeemer was fulfilled. The longing of human hearts, the longing of your heart and my heart is met by the babe born in Bethlehem. The question is, do we have room in our hearts for this child, Jesus? The answer comes from the poverty of a manger. There the lowly would find their welcome, for only in the ordinary surroundings of a stable would shepherds dare enter. And for those seekers who would leave their comforts to find the promise, the answer came. Jesus welcomes all those who come. Yes, the Word became flesh and made His dwelling among us. We have seen His glory, the glory of the one and only Son who came from the Father, full of grace and full of truth. So the Messiah came to us, and of all the titles, of all the descriptions by which he could have been known, he was given the name Jesus, for he would save his people from their sins. The King of all kings, the Lord of all lords, was born in a manger. 
He was the baby who would be given the name above all names. He is God, the high and holy one, clothed in human flesh, the author of life. He is the Savior, the Messiah. Jesus. You shall call his name Jesus.
You may be seated. Wasn't that wonderful? You know, I was sitting up here so I could watch all of you, and I noticed on the Gloria in Excelsis Deo, some of you were singing. <laughs> and you sounded pretty good. And they're going to do another cantata at Easter, and they begin to practice in February. So if you like to sing, you need to talk to this young lady right over here. <laughs> and she would love for you to join them. Um, they practice Sunday afternoon, usually around 3 or 4 o'clock, and they practice for about two months, and then they perform. But we'd love for you to, to join them. Tonight's performance was wonderful, but the question is, and the invitation is, come to the manger, and do you know him? And that's what Christmas is all about, that God, who existed from all eternity, became man for you and I to pay the penalty to die on the cross for our sins. And so this Christmas, enjoy time with family, enjoy time with each other and all the festivities that go on this time, but don't forget what Christmas is all about. It's about coming to the manger and accepting, trusting in the one born in the manger, even Jesus, the eternal Son of God. Why don't we close in prayer, and after we do, we're going to invite you to come back um, to Fellowship Hall for some treats, and if you'd like to come up and talk to some of the members of the cantata or to this young lady about Easter, <laughs> you may. But how about if we close in prayer? Father God, we give you thanks for the gift of music, and we thank you that we get to celebrate your birth in music. But Father, we, we pray for the message. We give you thanks that you loved us so much that you sent Jesus. And if there are folks here tonight, Father, that don't know you, I pray that you would speak to their hearts, draw them to yourself, allow them this Christmas to place their trust in you. We give you thanks for tonight. In Jesus' name, amen.